I'm talking about mobile mapping, but then for new assets, new utility assets, anything that's below ground, actually. That's where my presentation is about. Now, you may think, why? What, has it, what does it have to do with smart city? Well, I think anything that you, any service that, that runs, any service that actually um, a smart city is using, in one way or another way, needs to use actually the backbone in a city, which is actually the buried assets, the underground assets. Without that, I think most smart cities wouldn't work actually. I don't think this is working. Ah, okay. Can you click, make a couple of few kicks? One more? One more? I think, I think when we talk about um, buried assets, I mean, I would, I would say here basically every day, if you talk about anything that's underground, it's every day it's under threat. Because if you go to any city, lots of damages are made by every day basically. I'm coming from Amsterdam, I'm a Dutch guy. In Amsterdam, on a yearly basis, there are about 10,000 strikes in the city alone, in the center of the city. It's not because it's, the people are digging, let's say, foolish. It's quite often because the, uh, the essential infrastructure is not really mapped very well. It's not very accurate, it's very old in many cases. So I think we're, and if you think about a smart city, I think we're much more reliant on that network than maybe in the past. We're to totally connected. If for a recent, let's say, a network, you can't pay actually. Uh, so there's a lot of services which you don't think in daily life about. Can you switch on? Next slide, please. This is actually an example in, in actually in Germany, 2018. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody from Berlin here, but in 2018 there was a big strike and there was an outage of 30 hours. People couldn't pay, people couldn't call police, fireworks fire departments, if you think about that, the impact of such a thing, then you can imagine if that would happen now or maybe in 10 years time. And you may say, okay, what is the chance? It's maybe very small, but the reality is if it happens basically, we don't know what to do. So what it has to do with my topic basically, I think for me, it's a pledge basically to accurately map assets that are put in the ground. And you may think, okay, isn't that not done? No, it isn't actually, in many cases, the way, people, the, the way networks are constructed is still, in many cases, very inaccurate. So who am I? My name is Jan Willem. I'm a Dutch guy, father of four sons. I'm married. I've done more than 30 years in industrial automation. Last seven years, I'm working in a Pelican Corp, in a, geos, in a geospatial company, working in the geospatial domain and actually responsible for the EMEA business, European Middle East business of Pelican Corp. So, I mean, if you think about networks, and I'm talking about networks that are underground, that are built every day, that need to be renovated. I think when, we, when I talk about accuracy, it has to be less than five centimeters. And what we do basically is providing software solutions that connect to GNSS devices and it's not that our software is not used actually by surveyors. It is used by construction guys, by guys that are simply working in the field and in the trench. It's the guy that builds basically the networks themselves. So it needs to be a simple way of, of basically capture data. And I think the other thing is if you have accurate, let's say, mapping of your underground assets, it's an enabler for other technologies like augmented reality. At this moment, augmented reality is hardly, you can hardly use it because most of the networks are not accurately mapped. They might be half a meter away from where you think they are. But it would be nice if you know, if, this is, if you have a plan that you know, okay, the cable is there and then you can actually use augmented reality if you need to do repairs on those networks. Can you click through? Okay, one more. So I think if we go to this wheel and go from the start from left, from the left corner basically, I think what is key, I think it's enhancing basically the data collection, I think Preci precisely uh, data collection. Um, the fact of course that if you do mobile mapping with high accuracy, 
The data is immediately also accessible in Office. It makes modifications of projects much more easy. And I think integrating with smart city infrastructure, it, of course, it opens up, of course, the um, operational efficiency pretty much, by the way. Think about repairs of what is on the ground. If you know exactly where it is, it makes it life much easier. Of course, project efficiency, I mean, it's all about getting work done faster, basically. Making, doing more with the same people and, of course, having to do less work in the office. That's the things that we strive to do. Can you click to the next slide, please? One more. I think um, key, of course, in this kind of things is always cutting costs during the project life cycle. Uh, so I think that's one of the other things, of course, compared to traditional ways of methods of mapping how it's done today. And be aware, by the way, in many cases, if you go to work sites in any city, you will see that people map and, and collect data in different ways. And still, a lot of times, they use paper, Excel sheets. And you may think, OK, that's not of this world, but that's the real case. That's the way things are done still. Of course, if you, if you can do things in one time first or right, of course, it means less rework. Uh, less travel times, all of course reducing basically and helping net zero that many cities want to achieve. And of course advancing smart city innovation, like for example, as I mentioned before, introducing augmented reality. And lastly, of course, reliability, utility, services and connectivity, because most of those assets that are built, they last for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And I think although most of the, let's say, costs are always, are always often looked at the project cycle, at the project phase, in many cases, the, the, the infrastructure itself lives maybe for 20, 30 years. So it means it's probably much more important to look to that, that total cost of ownership than only to that project cost initial phase. Okay, I think... Okay, if I'm looking to there some of the challenges basically of asset, um, asset location, then one of the things basically is that often it's that a lot of construction companies who in the end of the day are the ones that build the networks, they are basically under pressure of what they have to use. Uh, if, if I'm looking in the Netherlands, for example, in the Netherlands it's quite common that construction companies, utility contractors have teams that use our software with a GNSS piece of equipment. But that's not everywhere the case, because it means that you have to invest in that, that, that equipment, basically. You have to, have to invest in that, in that infrastructure. And not in every country that's the case. In many cases, contractors see it as an as a upfront cost that I can't justify in a project. So it depends a little bit on the, on the total infra infrastructure or the ecosystem in a country. In the Netherlands, for example, utilities, they demand uh, accuracy within five centimeters. I mean, then it's going to be very hard to do that with tape measurement. And particularly if time is of essence, the only way you can do it fast is by using software like ours with basically GNSS equipment to do that. Then, of course, there are constantly cost constraints I already mentioned before. I mean, often it's the focus on the project but not on the whole life cycle. And then shortage of skilled su surveyors. I mean, I'm gonna talk a little bit in a couple of minutes about the use case in the Netherlands, but if you think about how many utility contracts are going on in any given country, there is never enough surveyors to do basically the documentation of those works. So if I, again, if I'm looking in the Netherlands, there, the workflow is actually that a co utility contractor will do that documentation themselves. Not for utility, co not for utility networks that don't need surveys for that documentation work. And the reason is very simple. There, isn't, there are not enough surveys, for example, in the Netherlands to do that piece of work, and it's not needed either. The guy, the, the blue collar worker that's working in the trains, they can do it, and they do it. Can you? I think one of the 
quick couple of words. I think if you can map more accurately, then the chances of damages to networks is, is basically diminishing. It's not zero, because it will never be zero. People, are, it's always depending on humans, on how they behave. But I mean, you, it basically means that you can basically reduce the strikes to those networks. So, I thought I've put this slide in as well. I've, often when I talk to utilities and contractors, they say, yeah, well, the cost of a repair is not so, uh, not so large. It's not so, it's not so big. Okay, in some cases, if it's, if it's high voltage, high, high pressure gas, okay, that's the difference. Uh, but often they say, okay, it's not an issue, basically. But there has been a study about eight years ago in Birmingham in the UK, and they tried to estimate what is the real society cost of a damage of an under, of a buried network. And the outcome of that study was basically that the real cost is 20 times higher than the repair cost. Now you can argue if it's 20 or 30 or 40, whatever it is, but it's not the repair cost that is a real issue. It is actually the other costs, the society costs that are impacting. And I would say that with smart cities, that cost is actually much higher. Because if you think about other services that are running and on top of that, uh, of smart traffic management, uh, smart parking systems, whatever it is basically, it's depending again on that network. And if it's out, these systems don't function anymore. So please keep this in mind if you think about basically what the cost, real cost is of a strike. Okay, we, in the Netherlands, when we talk about, let's say, works on utility networks, uh, we, we, t we tend to talk about the, basically, the digital blue collar worker. So the guy that is working actually in the trench, building a network. I see somebody recognizing it maybe, but, and it's actually, this, this is actually a real case. And so we actually, in the Netherlands, we talk about just ordinary field teams using these tools day in, day out. So they build and they also document what they build faster than if you have other teams doing that piece of work and also saving cost actually. Now we'll talk about one typical process in the Netherlands, which I am really proud of that we have, that that has been developed. And this is basically a something around a project process around house connections because it's a process which is probably one of the most common ones and also in volume wise a big a big process in the Netherlands if we talk about 50,000 houses that are built and of course houses that are renovated you talk a lot about a lot of new connections to be made and if you think today in many countries this is really a very inefficient process in many countries so what we have in the Netherlands basically since started in 2014, one more, yep, is basically a process which is a collaboration between utilities and contractors. It basically means that as private persons, contractors, when they have new, when there are new houses to be built, they basically announce those, they request those connections in an open platform. And in the end of the day, that basically those new connections will be going to contractors for, um, for executing those new, new connections. The re the, um, it's probably not long enough to go on all the details, but it's basically a symbiosis between utilities and contractors to make the whole process smarter and also faster and of course saving valuable times. It's a fully digital end-to-end -end process going from the utilities to the contractor who builds the connection in the end going fully back without any piece of paper, basically. Now, on, one, on the left side, you will see basically the, the, the part of the process which is about the requesting of new connections. The middle part is actually about the whole executing of that. And once such a connection is started, the process is finished in 24 hours. So it basically means that every, 20, every connection is done within 24 hours from start to finish. And it's basically all about basically making the data reliable, accurate, 
save time and cost because this saves a lot of time also in offices have new, needing less GIS resources to finish off that work and also making sure that new that new plans the plans that you, that utilities have are basically updated in 30 days so within 30 days if you would ask for to a utility the plan of an area you will have the accurate data including all the house connections Can you skip this because in, for time, please skip. Uh, I think the most, I think most key thing are probably to re, to understand from this. If you if you look in this type of technologies, basically, what we see is that you have a 10 to 20 percent time saving of field field teams, and that you have a 50 percent saving of basically what is the office work, reduction of office work of redo work, etc. So there's a considerable amount of time saving of the companies that implemented those solutions. Can you please? And what we do, of course, one of the things, our part of that is basically the software tooling to capture the data. And for that purpose, we connect to various field devices like GNSS devices and EM locators. I think the most, I think, the key summary, I think the key takeaway, what I would say is, I think for smart cities to actually work flawlessly, I think you need to start, I think, with a very accurate location of your assets. I think if you don't have that, I think the risks are very high. And I think particularly for new builds, I think it's very important that company, that everybody starts using, let's say, the proper techniques, whether that's our software or any piece of software, that doesn't matter. but. I think it's pretty key. And I think this is also where probably responsibi responsibility lies with the councils, with the utilities, and also with the contractors. But particularly utilities play a big role. They can basically demand the accuracy that they want for their new assets.